So today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. Today I'm going to be walking you through a social media platform which is very new, very up and coming and uses some pretty interesting open source technology, Blab.im. So one of the big problems in the open source world is that live streaming is, is kind of difficult to do without having to use Adobe Flash. Now there are ways that we're getting around this um, and HTML5 streaming is pretty much the, the course of action that um, like Google Hangouts is taking, that Twitch want to take, that Mac have encouraged developers to take because of course um, Apple have quite historically been against the use of Flash technology in favor of more open platforms yeah. or at least better platforms. Um, and it, I don't think I can think of a live streaming platform off the top of my head that actually mm -hmm. Um, will work off the bat in a completely open source browser like Firefox. And I did fire up Firefox, turned off Flash, and it, it, it worked really well. So it's a very accessible browser. It also, as we understand it, works in browsers on mobile platforms. So whereas I think there's only an iOS app of it now, and I think there is an Android one in the works, but it still works in your phone's browser regardless of um, what phone you're using simply because the technology is quite universal and quite... Mm -hmm. um, is HTML5 compliant, pretty much. So, Matt, do you want to explain some of the sort of ins and outs of it? Because you, you're a, a much bigger fan of it than I am. Yeah, so we can only have... Oh, um... hang on a minute. I haven't introduced you. Okay. Which, uh, how oh, rude of me. Um, <laughs> so this is Matt, Matt Polka. He has a channel here on YouTube, of course. I'll link to it down in the description below. But tech isn't your day job. You're more of a motivational speaker, I guess. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you've appeared on this channel before, and you're often on live streams with me. Um, I think that's about an introduction, isn't it? Is there anything you want to throw in there? Yeah, I'm. I'm. I do book reviews, and I'm kind of big on self leadership and self improvement. So that's kind of my my fort. But I am like I like social media. So I'm. I've Twitter and Tumblr and Facebook and Blab, which is really recent. But what's really neat about Blab is I like to tell people that it's sort of like a live streaming version of Skype combined to Twitter, because a lot of people are using Twitter to collect everybody via hashtag to specific kinds of Blabs and events. But it is it is like a it is kind of like taking all those and meshing them together because you have people on the right hand side that can comment and hit, use the at symbol for their usernames and when you log in as you saw you connect your Twitter account to Blab when you yeah. sign up and you get your little bio in there as well but only four people can be in a room at a time but you can ask questions they've started adding features such as um, messaging people in the comments and then they have a little backspace there which is new and you can do. Like, you can modify the chat and stuff in light and dark mode. I've seen people using it a lot for live shows and radio shows, um, interview shows. I know some TV shows have done stuff on here and even had a big entrepreneur event for 168 hours on this. Wow. So it's a very, very, it's basically the live stream version of Skype. It's yeah. very interactive. I mean, I'd say it's better than Skype for, for a number of ways. One is that it's it works on more platforms. Um the dynamic of only having four people, I think, is particularly interesting because at first I was like dead against it. That was like a red line for me <laughs> initially. And then you got me on it and we started talking and we had four people on and we were chatting with people in the comments. And I felt that the, the dynamics of that particular conversation were a lot better because you don't like when you have more than four people, it becomes so easy, especially with things like latency and whatever, to talk over each other when it's actually a lot more productive to have a small number of people and an engaged yeah. comment section. So there on the right-hand side, you can see where effectively at the moment it's where we logged in because this isn't a particularly public live stream as of yet. We're just sort of demonstrating the the platform at the moment. Um, and we'll probably crack on after we'd record this video and have some fun with it. Um, yeah, the other cool thing you said too is the audio. When you, you yeah. can speak over people and the latency you said doesn't cut back. And the other thing too is you can tweet out, you can tweet out the live stream, you can tweet out your friends, you can ask questions for the live stream. And when you record shows in here, you can start recording and then pause and then continue recording. And it will still stitch all of your footage together at the end in a final video file. It'll also give you a link to an MP3 of the, I think it's a Waver MP3 of the actual live stream. It's six hours total time, I think, per blab. So you can go up to six hours. And it has an end link. So if you want to like put it on your website when you're live streaming, people can go right to your site and see the blab happening when they're oh. right on your site. It's got an end link, so that's good. That's that's a good feature. And they're always innovating. They're always innovating stuff. You can make people co-hosts in Blabs. I think the reason they did that was because they wanted somebody to be monitoring the comments 
if there are a lot of people, yes. and then somebody to be able to to monitor the people in the stream. But yeah, you can delete comments, and you can um, you can kick people out. You can lock seats inside the blab so people can't join if you only want specific people inside. Yeah, there's a lot of really cool features in this. Yeah, always so updating it. Here we've got like an open seat, but you as the moderator for this particular conversation could then close that off and stop new people joining, so that it works as a really well as like a phone in platform. So if I, you know, if we were taking calls or whatever. You know, come on mm-hmm. in, enjoy the and show. I can click on, and I can click on your name, and it, it gives you your profile and how many followers you have and how many people are following you. And then you can hit the, uh, there's this little gray H on the left with a plus above the H, and you can hit it, and you can make somebody a co-host. Oh, yeah. And that will allow them to monitor the chat and edit the title of somebody speaking. You can edit the title anytime to make sure you keep the lab on topic or just what you're talking about so people that come in have an idea what the blab is about yeah and uh, yeah you can have more than one co-host everybody in the blab can be a co-host and co-host if i leave this blab i can immediately hop back into the blab i don't need your permission to join so if i leave i can click and hop right in the seat and join because i'm a host i don't have to get your permission what if all the seats are full and a second host leaves for i don't know connectivity reasons or they go away for a bit can they kick someone out to get back in or is it are they stuck out at that point and there's only one moderator i think I think the I think that the only issue is you have to have somebody more more than one person as a host because I think if the host leaves the stream, That's I don't think people can get in. I'm not sure. I actually I actually haven't tried it. We can try it right now. Okay. I don't know if. Well, we can try it. We can try it later. But I'm, I think they may have they may have put some sort of precaution in there to make sure that the live streams don't go on because people have left. I've even heard with uh, Periscope and stuff, people have left labs. And then the blab keeps going on if they never end it. So you know, uh, I think everybody might have to leave the blab, and then the host will leave last to stop it, yeah. or the host can probably leave, and everybody will get kicked out. I haven't necessarily messed with that yet, but also, that probably happens. With um, there is one thing that I find particularly interesting about it. It kind of makes sense, but it is something that I think needs to be said: is the recording functionality doesn't give you the ability to actually delete the videos. Is that right? Yes, it doesn't give you the ability to delete, but it does give you the ability to hide the videos from other people so they can't they can't see the video. But you can still see and unhide it. So technically it's very similar to privating something. If yeah. somebody were to get a hold get a hold of your account though and log in as you, they can unhide you and access the video. Yes. So. Of course the 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 issue there, of course, is that Blab actually have the video, and you don't know, obviously, what's going to happen with Blab as a company. I mean, it is only a month-old startup, but you don't actually record anything until you click the actual Start Record button there on the, that uh, folks at home can see on the left. So that is one criticism yeah. I've got of the platform, is that you can't delete videos. Now, I understand that when you're live streaming, you are in a public forum. Other people are free to record what it is that you're saying, but I just feel that there is that somewhat lack of control however it also does have the added benefit of staying up there so that if people take words and things that you say out of context there is always the full context there available if you want to yeah um, and you can download the video the video so i guess they have the video but if you wanted to keep a copy of it right yeah. you just download the video at the end and it uploads right to youtube i forgot to mention that oh, when you finish you can YouTube. You can upload straight to YouTube channel. Wow, so they, yep, there's a link for that. Wow, considering that this is actually a very new piece of software, I mean, Blab <laughs> is, as a website, is like, what, one or two months old? So this is really quite, yeah. quite new stuff, and they've got a lot of features on, on it for such a new platform. Do. Uh, I don't think we've had any bugs in it, despite the fact that they're calling it beta, so that they clearly know what they're doing on some level. Yeah, they do. It has engaged. They've, they're using it. They're really exploiting it in a good way. Like a lot yeah. of people are using this. There's probably a few thousand people on here. I'm not sure how fast it's growing. We, we checked oh, yeah. that before. Well, one but, thing um, I, I really do like about this, the other live streaming platforms have really failed to get down is actually not necessarily all live stream platforms have, but is the um, discoverability of blabs. I find that whenever we do a blab, there's no shortage of people that you know come in and join in and and speak with us and even yeah. sometimes join us on the live stream so you know you'll find with things like the live streaming system that google has and that youtube has it's a very like it wants to be the next twitch but it's yeah not. it's kind of frag it's kind of fragmented how do you find right? live you can't find live streams on yeah. on youtube but they're bang they're on the front page of blab so yeah. i think and i don't know how, how many like i was gonna say oops how many um how many blabs are going on at one time like if you go to the 
I mean, I'm not sure if it shows all of them, but if you go to like the main Blab page, though, there are only ever like 25 to 30 going on at a time. Well, right now there's there's they're doing it by rows of three now instead of rows of four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. So there's sixteen times three, which is what whatever. Um, that's that's a good amount of labs. Sixty-eight. So. There are there are sixty eight or forty eight sixteen times three. Oh, whoops! No, yeah, you're right. No, yeah. sixteen times so, three. So two two is thirty two. The other one is forty eight. Yeah, I was right. Yeah. So so there are forty eight blabs going on right now, and I mean that's that's a lot less than the amount of YouTube videos on YouTube that people are watching, and the audience is bigger there. Yeah. But you're right. YouTube doesn't really have a. I don't know if they have a specific way of searching just for live streams. Unless it's the gaming, I don't think so. Like so when I've done gaming gaming live streams on YouTube and not not um, inform subscribers and things like that, but let it go out sort of organically and naturally, I never get very much in the way of interest. On Twitch, I do, not an amazing mm-hmm. amount, and it depends very much on the game. Like if I play a Bethesda game, guaranteed that like five people will show up to join in. But if I play mm-hmm. like obviously something more obscure, like Science Girls or um, Long Live the Queen. <laughs> you know you're going to be playing by yourself anyway i'm going to wrap this up now this is cool being pretty pretty good pretty informative i think we covered most of the bases there are a lot of little things like um the ability to give props by clicking on yeah, the and follow people you can um it goes by a follow system so if you want to notifications to it'll show when people are live and when people schedule blab so they'll send you an email when somebody schedules a blab and you can you can mark it and save it yeah so um i think that's about it from us today thanks for the applause there um thank you matt for joining me and um don't forget to check out his channel link of course will be in the description and until next time i've been chris ware and you've been awesome take care now